Garment grid. How come I find other garment grids in treasure chests hidden in ancient temples built long before Shinra was born? I just... I, uh, oh god, somebody help me. I just... I, I, I don't know what's going on and my brain is melting and I haven't been even playing for an hour yet. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake, the Albed language shit again? They expect you to go tracking down the translation markers again? Go digging in the Beaconel Desert. Expose yourself to the language as much as possible. Expose yourself to my cock. I already did this shit the last fucking game, and I didn't care that time either. Hell, Riku's one of the core characters. She's an Albed. She knows the fucking language. She grew up speaking the fucking language. Go digging in the Beaconel Desert. Go digging in my shit for corn. Why can't I just ask Riku to teach me the fucking language? It's her native fucking language. And besides, do you really think this guy is spilling some mind-blowing secrets to fucking enlightenment in this scene to warrant a second fucking playthrough? Fuck you. Fuck your busy work. Miss Yuna, what can I do for you? Oh, Jesus, I forgot about the blue Jar Jar fuckers. Fuck these guys, too. Our bar keeps a high color. No one knows his real name, so everyone just calls him Barky. That is a problem. Let me see if I can solve that one. Ask him his fucking name! God damn it! <sighs> so the premise is that Yuna and the others are sphere hunters. And by sphere hunters, I basically mean thieves in the same way that Indiana Jones is an archaeologist. Only the stuff the Gullwings are after is by and large valueless crap. Treasure sphere waves, they're coming from those ruins they found at Gagazet. Okay, so spheres emit waves of what? Hey, the rocks are floating! Don't tell me we gotta climb up that thing! No worries, I'll take you to the top. <laughs> okay, so by take you to the top, he means push you out of the fucking airship to fall 60 feet onto the narrowest, most dangerous precipice imaginable. It's a miracle they all just didn't die right there. Yuna faints from vertigo immediately, and the girls catch her as she falls. <laughs> okay, no, no, I'm not counting ass shots anymore. Before it was just a funny quirk of the game's direction. Here, it's intentional fan service. They pull Yuna back onto the ledge and run into LeBlanc and her cronies again. And get used to me saying that. Uh, LeBlanc, remember that name well, loves. It turns out the LeBlanc Syndicate's a rival group of sphere hunters, but really they just come off as a less threatening version of Team Rocket because all they do is show up every 30 minutes to get their asses kicked. Prepare for trouble! Make it double! Once you beat them down again, they run off, and then it's a race to the top of the mountain to get the sphere. Wait, hang on, I thought the guy flying the airship promised he was taking us to the top. No worries, I'll take you to the top. I mean, that's not something one should easily screw up. The top should be relatively easy to find. It's an unambiguous measure of altitude. Go as high as possible. That's the top. And how did LeBlanc get to the summit of Mount Gagazet at virtually the same time as the Gullwings when she doesn't have an airship? I mean, it's clear on the other side of the continent, and the Gullwings have the only airship in existence. Well, when you get to the top, you find all three of them hanging from a ledge helplessly. How did they get there? Would you, would you stop staring? And instead of saving them, you just walk on like you don't see nothing. I mean, wow. You can't even attempt to save them from falling to their deaths if you wanted to. You aren't given an option. Look at this. I'm just gonna loot their fucking treasure chest right in front of them and walk off laughing. Like a boss. That is cold as ice. When you reach the top of the mountain, you find the sphere, but predictably it's guarded by a boss monster. A giant enemy crab. Sadly, it has no weak point you can attack for massive damage, but it's pretty easy anyway, and you finally get a hold of this wave-radiating sphere and take a look at its contents. worth the trouble! I am so glad we risked our lives on that fucking mountain tracking that thing down. It's not very exciting. Junk. You scored the Black Mage dress oh, Wait, Black Mage? I, was there a Black Mage in that sphere? Was there a Black Mage recording the sphere? The hell is going on? No sooner do you finish watching that sphere that sensors detect two more of them. I guess they weren't emitting enough sphere waves before, but now they are. Fucking sphere waves. There's at least one on Besaid Island. 
and another in the Xanarkand ruins. Really? You didn't think to check Xanarkand for spheres about Titus? You know, the guy who comes from Xanarkand? The guy who never shut the fuck up about being from fucking Xanarkand that entire fucking game? And that wasn't the first fucking place you looked? One of the greatest mocking using civilizations in the world's history with millions of fucking people in it and it just now occurred to you to look at fucking Xanarkand? Fuck, this is stupid! Oh god, I hate this fucking game! Deep Wang! So you go to fucking Besaid Island to get the sphere out of there and check up on Waka and Lulu's new baby because all those treasure sphere waves being emitted from there can't be good for a child. I'm sorry, I just... I can't get over the sphere waves. <gasps> Waka! A daddy! And yeah, store that thought away for a future nightmare. Waka ejaculating and creating a new life form. I mean... How do I know how a father's supposed to act in front of his kid? Here's a free one. Stop styling your hair like a quail's head. This scene establishes why Pain is here to replace Lulu, who's now pregnant with Waka's freak seed. Great maternity wear, Lulu. She's still wearing the same ridiculous clothes now. And actually, now that I think about it, since she's pregnant, does that mean her boobs are actually going to get bigger? Minor tangent, but just looking around, the world is reacting with surprising calm to learn their entire global religion was a genocidal lie for a thousand years. I'd expect Waka at least to have some major mental problems. That guy was a serious Yevon freak. <laughs> oh god, Yevon lied to me, huh? I believed in you! I've got this key with the emblem of Besaid on it. How did- 900,000 gil? Eat my tits! This ain't exactly a mid-condition copy of Action Comics number one, you know. The fuck do I care about a key? I'll be back. Heading out to find the sphere, you get to see all the new monsters this game has to offer. Like, no new monsters at all, just the exact same dogs and evil scoops of ice cream we fought the entirety of the last game. You know, I highly doubt they came up with more than five or six original monsters since the previous game, aside from palette swapping other monsters. Eventually you find a bunker locked with a passcode, where I think this game could have perhaps saved itself by crossing over with the Fallout universe. Alas, no. You find the sphere inside, which is naturally guarded by a boss. Find the sphere and the fiends appear. Actually, yeah, what is it with these spheres attracting fucking archdemons to protect them? What do monsters care about spheres except for the fact that they're shiny? The way these things attract big badass monsters, you'd think people would want them as far away from themselves as possible, or even destroyed outright. I don't know, well, let's see the sphere, I guess. I mean, the first one was a dud, but they gotta get better from here, right? I'm, s I'm sorry, how exactly are we making money doing this again? I mean, what the fuck was that? That was 10 seconds of a staticky waterfall. Great job, guys! Let's throw this shit on eBay! Our retirement's secure! Oh, but which, what am I thinking? We couldn't possibly sell this. It belongs in a fucking museum. I know everything. Okay, smartass. How do we get Titus back? I'm just a kid. Kid is seriously starting to piss me off. You go to Xanarkin next, which has become a tourist attraction in the two years since you've been there. A tourist attraction with deadly ninjas and snakes made of miniguns. And it seems you're not the only group of sphere hunters with designs of plundering the ancient ruins. We're sphere hunters! The Kitty Guardians! Oh my god! I could have gone to med school and instead I played this fucking game. I just, I can't... It's so stupid! How does this series even have fans? I just, I, I can't, I can't. You're watching this, right? I implore you. Am I wrong? The Kinder Guardians tell you they have part of some password, which is key, and it's not long before you find a ninja on a radio who tells you the other part. Oh, hey, I wanted to double check that clue. It's Mon, right? Nah, it's just that I heard some kids saying it was key. It's Monkey. <laughs> yeah, I figured it was Mon. Over and out. Put it together, fuck pump, it's Monkey. The clues are Key and Mon. It's Monkey! How do you not get this? Key Mon? It's Monkey! Monkey! You vapid whores! Monkey! Ah! Oh my god! Monkey! 
Monkey! What unholy terror is this? It's like she's possessed by a demon or she's become some kind of wooden puppet. The eyes, they're flat and lifeless like a doll's eyes. And what is with the lip flaps? Monkey! It's like the word oh, monkey's got six syllables all of a sudden. Monkey! Oh, and speaking of monkeys, we should get something out of the way right now. It has to do with the subquests. This game is full of subquests. In fact, subquests probably compose the majority of the game's content. There's optional dungeons, lots of those, huge ones to unlock limit breaks, additional powers, and really bizarre dress fears like the Lady Luck, Gun Mage, Trainer, and the Mascot, all of which you'll probably never use. And there's Blitzball. Oh god, is there a fuckload of Blitzball because I couldn't get enough of that in the first fucking game. There's Sphere Break, which will probably take about 20 hours and cause you to eat your controller in rage. There's monster hunting, there's chasing butterflies, there's puzzles, there's chocobo ranching. And as for monkeys, there's also a subquest where you have to pair up dozens of monkeys in the Xanarkin ruins so they can all have babies. Look, I can put up with an insane amount of bullshit from Square. I played the bouncer for fuck's sake, but I refuse to put up with a fantasy RPG that seriously expects me to play for a fucking hour running back and forth trying to get monkeys to fuck. So yeah, I don't give a crap about the subquests in this game, and I didn't waste my time doing hardly any of them. It's not like you need them. They're really just there for the most obsessive of completionists and the people who want to attempt to get the special ending you get for 100% completion of the game, which is basically impossible to do even if you know what you're doing, have a strategy guide in your lap as you play it, and even then, it'll still probably take you two complete playthroughs to do it. Do you even know how easily you can get fucked over if you're going for 100% completion? If you do every single thing there is to do in this game but miss one piece of dialogue, 99% no special ending. One line of dialogue the game deems important in 50, 60 hours of gameplay. And that includes random people in town who just shout stuff you have no reason to talk to. If you miss one, 99%. If you leave the screen before their text bubbles disappear on their own, 99%. You'll never know what you missed either or where. So, 100% completion? I got three words for you. YouTube and fuck that. Trust me, it's not worth it. Oh, but I'll show it to you anyway. Stay tuned for part two. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to use my penis on something. Am I stealing your spot? Yes, sir. This can't be happening. This, this cannot be my life. 